Regardless of the type of practice, laser therapy can be used in a large number of applications and is an extremely versatile therapy modality. Almost every patient will benefit from the application of photobiostimulation at the primary point of the clinical complaint, but it is easily applied to all secondary clinical issues as well. Disorders that have plateaued or were unresponsive before will benefit from photobiostimulation. Each patient should be evaluated, diagnosed, and have a therapy plan established that reaches therapeutic goals for their unique condition. Photobiostimulation allows for an increase in cellular health and energy. Photons are absorbed only by unhealthy cells. They have no effect on normal, healthy cells. The three properties of laser light, coherency, monochromicity, and collimation produce an intense, deep, penetrating beam of photons that can be absorbed by the individual cells. Photons penetrate to the individual cells and stimulate both the cell membrane and the structures within the cells. One organ that is photoreceptive is the mitochondria. The mitochondrion is the cellular structure that produces the energy for the cell. All photons are absorbed by receptors, the chromophores, on the mitochondria. The membrane protein, cytochrome oxidase, is the key photoreceptor of these photons. This causes increased production of cellular energy, ATP, which leads to a normalization of cell function, pain relief, and healing. The photobiostimulation on the chromophores on the mitochondria and the cell membrane of the individual cells have four main effects. These are cellular energy levels are increased, pain relief or analgesia within the tissues from the NO2 release, anti-inflammatory cascade of the events, and an acceleration of the patient's own cellular healing processes. Photobiostimulation of the cells causes a biochemical cascade of events within the cells that results in, one, a relief of pain referred to as analgesia, two, a reduction of inflammation, three, an acceleration of tissue repair and wound healing, four, improved circulation referred to as angiogenesis, five, increased cellular metabolic activity, six, reduction in fibrous tissue formation, seven, improved nerve function, eight, stimulation of immunoregulation, nine, stimulation of acupuncture points. Analgesia results from a biochemical cascade of events within the tissues. There is one, an increase in the release of beta endorphins, two, an increase in the release of nitric oxide, three, a decrease in the levels of bradykinase, four, a normalization of the ion channels, five, a stabilization of the membrane potential of the nerve cells. Six, an increase in the release of acetylcholine. Seven, a blocked depolarization of the C-fiber afferent nerves. To understand what occurs in the individual cells during photobiostimulation, let us look at each of these events in detail. One of the first pain amelioration events to occur during photobiostimulation is an increase in the beta endorphins levels. It is accomplished with a combination of local and systemic actions that utilize enzymatic, chemical, and physical interventions. The localized and systemic increase of the endogenous peptide after therapy laser irradiation has been clinically reported in multiple studies with subsequent reductions in pain. The second notable event is an increase in nitric oxide production. When cytochrome C is converted by photobiostimulation to cytochrome C oxidase, a nitric oxide molecule is released. Nitric oxide has both a direct and indirect impact on pain sensation. As a neurotransmitter, it is essential for normal nerve cell action potential in impulse transmission activity and indirectly 
the vasodilation effect of nitric oxide can enhance nerve cell perfusion and oxygenation. The next event in the analgesic biochemical cascade is a decrease in the bradykinin levels. Since bradykinins elicit pain by stimulating nociceptive afferents in the skin and viscera, mitigation of elevated levels through laser therapy can result in pain reduction. Laser-induced decrease in plasma calocrines, increase in kinase 2, and increase in nitric oxide are considered the contributors to this bradykinin decrease. Part of the biochemical process allows the normalization of ion channels. Laser therapy promotes normalization in calcium, sodium, and potassium concentrations resulting in pain reduction as a result of these ion concentration shifts. There is a stabilization of nerve cell action potentials. Healthy nerve cells tend to operate at about negative 70 millivolts and fire at about negative 35 millivolts. Compromised cell membranes have a lowered threshold as their resting potentials and average around this negative 35 millivolt range. That means that normal, non-noxious activities produce pain. Laser therapy can help restore the action potential closer to the normal negative 70 millivolt range. Both compound muscle action potential, CMAP values, and nerve latency values have shown improvement with laser therapy clinically and in the literature. Acetylcholine was one of the first neurotransmitters to be discovered. Acetylcholine is produced by the synthetic enzyme choline acetyltransferase that uses acetyl coenzyme A and choline as substrates for the formation of acetylcholine. Dietary choline and phosphatidylcholine serve as the sources of free choline and acetylcholine synthesis. Upon release, acetylcholine is metabolized into choline and acetate by acetylcholinesterase and other nonspecific esterases. Acetylcholine release can be excitatory and or inhibitory depending upon the type of tissue and the nature of the receptor with which it interacts. By increasing the available acetylcholine, laser therapy helps in normalizing nerve signal transmission in the autonomic, somatic, and sensory neural pathways. An extremely important event occurs secondary to the therapeutic laser irradiation, a blocked depolarization of C-fiber afferent nerves. The pain blocking effect of therapeutic lasers can be pronounced, particularly in low velocity neural pathways, such as non-myelinated afferent axons and nociceptors. Laser irradiation suppresses the excitation of these fibers in the afferent sensory pathway. In summary, all of these biochemical events result in a level of analgesia for the patient. Anti-inflammatory biochemical cascade of events. The highlights of this biochemical cascade of events are the following. Photobiostimulation inhibits the synthesis of inflammatory prostaglandin. Photobiostimulation allows a stabilization of the cellular membrane. And as already discussed, photobiostimulation stimulates ATP production and synthesis. It stimulates vasodilation, accelerates leukocytic activity causes a reduction in interleukin-1. Prostaglandins are a group of hormone-like substances. Like hormones, they play a role in a wide variety of phys physiological processes. Prostaglandins act in a manner similar to that of hormones by stimulating target cells into action. However, they differ from hormones in that they act locally near the site of synthesis and they are metabolized very quickly. Another unusual feature is that the same prostaglandins act differently in different tissues. One example of this is that one form of prostaglandins is what exacerbates arthritic conditions within the joints, 
while another form of prostaglandins alleviates the condition. Specific prostaglandins often have somehow contrary functions. There are prostaglandins that aggravate inflammatory conditions, and there are prostaglandins that alleviate them. Photostimulation initiates an increased prostaglandin synthesis, particularly in conversion of the prostaglandins PGG2 and PGH2 into prostaglandin PGI2. PGI2 is considered an independent mediator and is often referred to as prostacyclin. Prostacyclin has a vasodilating and anti-inflammatory action with some attributes similar to COX-1 and COX-2. COX-1 and COX-2 enzymes are responsible for inflammation and pain. Prostacyclin's interactions, in contrast to thromboxane, another eicosanoid, strongly suggests a mechanism of cardiovascular homeostasis between the two substances in relation to vascular damage. Photobiostimulation influences the calcium, sodium, and potassium concentrations, as well as the proton gradients over the mitochondrial membrane. This is accomplished in part by the reduction of beneficial reactive oxygen species, aka ROS, wherein triplet oxygen molecules absorb photons, producing singlet oxygen molecules. These ROSs modulate the intracellular calcium concentrations, and laser therapy improves calcium uptake in the mitochondria. Adenosine triphosphate, ATP, is a multifunctional nucleotide that is most important as molecular currency of intracellular energy transfer. In this role, ATP transports chemical energy within cells for metabolism. Adenosine triphosphate production and synthesis are significantly enhanced, contributing to cellular repair, reproduction, and functional ability. Photobiostimulation of cytochrome C oxidase, a chromophore found on the mitochondria of cells, plays a major role in this rapid increase in production and synthesis of ATP. Vasodilation is stimulated via an increase in histamine, nitric oxide, and serotonin levels, resulting in reduction of ischemia and improved perfusion. Photon-mediated vasodilation enhances the transport of nutrients and oxygen to the damaged cells and facilitates repair and removal of cellular debris. Beneficial acceleration of leukocytic activity results in enhanced uh, removal of non-viable cellular and tissue components, allowing for a more rapid repair and regeneration process. Photobiostimulation reduces the effect of this inflammatory cytokine. Interleukin-1 is a factor in the induction of fever and part of the process that results in a degeneration within articular surfaces, such as those associated with rheumatoid arthritis. Immediately after an acute injury event, the body, in response to the disruption of the integrity of the vascular soft tissue, the connective tissue, or neurological processes, initiates a series of biological and biochemical responses. A portion of this is referred to as inflammatory reaction. The inflammatory reaction consists of both vascular and cellular events. Injury responsive components such as mast cells, bradykinins, and prostaglandins are activated along with the vascular responses and cellular membrane reactions. All of these combined processes and events are represented by the symptoms of edema, inflammation, pain, and functional debility. A summary flowchart of the cellular cascade in reducing tissue inflammation is presented here. The cumulative effect of these multiple interactive processes and events is an accelerated inflammatory cycle with diminished symptoms and earlier normalization. Since laser therapy does not exacerbate the inflammatory process, but rather condenses the time frame from onset to resolution through acceleration of processes, it can be used immediately post-injury. This rapid initiation of therapy in acute inflammation will assist in limiting the scope, duration of the 
inflammatory event and the minimization of pain and severity associated with it. Most of the beneficial effects seen from laser therapy in the treatment of acute inflammatory events will also have medical efficacy as laser therapy is initiated in more chronic inflammatory conditions. While the treatment regimen and course of therapy may be modified in chronic situations, the physiological responses and interactions remain consistent. Chronic conditions may require longer treatment times and results will vary with the patient, the condition, and the length of the chronicity associated with the condition.